we're going to be creating functionality where we can make a selection from a repeating group list, save that list to a temporary state, and then later on save that to the database. So let's get started. In my database, I have set up two data types. Under users, I have a full name, which is text. I have an image, which will be their profile image. And I have the job title. I've also created team. And a team will basically have a team name, such as marketing department. And it will also have a list of users. Let's quickly jump into the app data so we can see some of this information I've created. Here are my 10 users. And this is the kind of information that I've pre-populated. So I've got full name is Jamie Jackson. Here is the image. And here is the job title as marketing manager. And to create a thing, which is a user, you always need an email address. So I've just made this up. So let's head to the design tab. And I'm going to drag in a repeating group. I'm going to make it just six rows. The layout style, I'm just going to set to full list. This basically means that those full 10 rows from the database will be loaded on page load. If it was set to vertical scroll, it would be scrolling within these six rows but I prefer this just to grow to 10 rows. The type of content is a user. And the data source would be just simply do a search for users and bring me everything back from the database. I'm just going to remove the style. Actually, before I do that, I'm just going to play with this slightly. Let me drop in an image. And I'm going to set this to current cells users image. And we're going to process this with image IX. Resize to fit dimensions by cropping. Then run mode rendering is stretch. Okay. This basically means that we can create a perfectly round image as long as the image dimensions we have set is a perfect square. Okay, you don't need any fancy uh, image cropping plugins. You can do everything in Bubble with ImageIX. ImageIX is a third party plugin that Bubble have included within the application. Really handy. So let's make sure that this is 30 by 30. And I'm just going to center vertically. Okay, so that's image profile. Now I'm going to drop in the current cells user's full name. I'm going to change the style. Set that to Arial, nice and simple, just for this demo. Let's make that 20. Actually, let's make it 18. I'm going to change it to jet black. Change the line spacing to one because it's just on a single row. Okay, I'll set it about there. Maybe change that to bold. Now I'm just going to copy paste. This will serve as the current user's job title. I want this to be a bit smaller, maybe 15, not bold, and make it dark gray. Let's do 4, 4F, 4F, 4F. Okay, I'm just going to play with this slightly so that it all aligns correctly. Let me set this to 17. I'll just use my mouse to change the positioning slightly. Okay, back on this 
image profile. We've got 30 with 30 height. So if I set 15 roundness, that's a perfect circle. And image IX will take care of looking for the person's face within that square image. Okay, it'll reposition the crop really nicely. Now I'm going to highlight these three elements, right click and group them in a group. I'm going to change the group background style to flat color and FA is fine. So this will be a group that's basically containing my elements. Now I want to reposition these elements in the center. Now to do that, I'm going to group these three elements again and then center that group I've just created. I'm going to make sure that these elements in the group themselves are centered as well. That looks okay. And now we can put in our check mark. Now I've installed material icon by Google because I simply prefer those to these default icons that Bubble provides. So what I'm looking for is basically a check mark that is unchecked. So just a circle, there it is there. Basically the radio button unchecked. And let's make it the same color as this text down here. I think it was 4F, 4F, 4F. And in terms of size, let's make it 20 by 20 fixed width. Center that vertically. Bring that across to the right slightly. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to remove the spacing, the separato on the repeating group, and maybe change the height to 50, and just drag this down slightly to increase the gaps between. All right, some last minute touch-ups in the repeating group. Fantastic. So if we preview this, let's see what we have. Let's set up the state to be able to run the workflow to then change the circle to a check mark. So what we're going to do, instead of clicking the icon, we're actually going to click enable clicking the group itself. So if we start edit the workflow, what we'll do down on element actions and across to all elements over here, we'll say set state. Now I tend to set my state at page level. I don't attach them to elements themselves as it becomes a bit tricky to find these states later on. If they are set at page level, then you can actually see a nice clean list of all of the states you have on that particular page. So the page name is called demo. And I need to create this state. I'm going to call this user list. This is a type of user. And don't forget, this is a list of users. Okay. And the state we're creating is basically an invisible list that we are just going to use to quickly create this functionality of checking and unchecking. We wouldn't want to write to the database for every single time we click a user. Um, that's unnecessary. We just want to create a state which runs in your user's browser. So it's much more performant. Now to do this, first we're going to go find the, the state that exists. We're going to say the value is the demo's user list. Then we're going to come down and look for plus item. There it is there, current cells user. So the value is take the existing list and add this user. And if the list doesn't exist, what Bubble does in this instance is actually creates the list. So this works in both instances. We we'll have to start with the list, go find that list. If it doesn't exist, create it. If it or if it does exist, just plus item the current cells user. And now, because we have this state, we can use that state to change this to a check mark. So on the conditional, I'm going to say
I'm going to find that state list first when demos user list contains parent groups user, which is this person in this box, then change the icon to a check mark and change the color to green. Let's try this. And there we go. Now, what about deselecting? There's no point just having the ability to select something. The whole purpose of using a list and not writing to the database is for performance purposes. It's very quick. And it's also so users can quickly check and uncheck um, just by using the browser memory itself, which is the state we've created. So how do we uncheck? Because if I hit this again, nothing is happening. So what we actually need to do is split the conditional. So back in the workflow tab, when group user is clicked, I'm going to say, add this item only if that list we created, that state list, doesn't contain current cells user. Then I'm going to copy and paste. And on this particular one, we're going to use this workflow that's been split to say that if the user list contains current cells user, if that user is already in that state list, then minus item. So these are the exact opposite. So one button click, two options here. Option one, if the user list contains the current user, then take the list and minus that cells user. If the demo list doesn't contain the current cells user, then plus item current cells user. Let's test this. So I'm going to set these four and then I'm going to uncheck these two. But now what? We've created the state list. What can we do with it? Why don't we create some functionality where we can make a selection? Maybe we can select everyone in marketing. We're going to store that selection in a state. And with that selection, we're going to create a team and add the users to that team. Very common functionality. So let's grab an input. Stick it about there. Going to change the style to Arial. And add a button. So this will be 50 in height. So will this, nice and neat. Let's group these two. Let's rename this to create. And to demonstrate this newly created team, why don't we add a repeating group beneath it? This repeating group type of content will be team. Data source will be do a search for teams or team. Bring back all the teams, full list. I'm going to set this to two rows. So we have no teams at the moment, but we're going to create the state list. Then we're going to create the team name and then populate the team with these users. This can be current cells teams name. It's going to copy formatting and paste formatting. Make this a bit bigger. Okay, then now we want the users within that team. So repeating group, drop the repeating group within this repeating group cell. So this is a real neat feature with repeating groups is that you can 
create repeating groups within repeating groups. Right? We have a team, but that team has a list of users. The best way to display a list is within a repeating group. So we go get all the teams, and then we have enough space within the cell to also show the list of users within that particular team. This is set to user, and now the data source will be the current team's users, which is just simply a list of users. I'm going to set this to horizontal scrolling, and let's make this about four columns. Now I can copy and paste this image here. Maybe make this six columns. Maybe make these images a bit larger, maybe 40 pixels in height. And I'm just going to remove the separator just this slightly. Okay, remove the separator from this one as well. And group these two. Okay, on to this workflow. So we've created that state list. Now let's grab the state list, create the team, and write to the database with these new users that we've just selected. So we're going to create a new thing. So we're creating a new row in the database, which is a team. That team has the name, which is the value of that input, input A. And this is where the magic happens, because now we've done all of our selections, we've added, we've removed, we've refined our list. Now we can add a list, and that is the demos user list. Okay, so instead of adding to the database with each button click, we've reserved that to a one-step workflow. And that is how you build really performant applications. Now that we've added these users to this team, what I'm gonna do is just reset the state back to nothing, which frees up the next team that we'll create. So let's say, just go to demo, user list, and set it to blank. And I'm also going to reset inputs on that team name. Okay, let's try this. So I'm going to create a marketing team first. So head of marketing, Alice. Let's get someone else in marketing. And Jamie Jackson. With that, I can create my team. When I click Create, that workflow is going to run. There it is there. There's the marketing team. Now, I can see these images didn't quite uh, change the... They're not quite round enough. So, all we need to do is increase the radius because the size is 40 by 40, but the radius is 15. We need at least half the height, so 20. This creates a social media team. And now we need to select the social media people. So Vivian, Alicia, Jesse, three people, create. And there it is. So working with state lists is a really important feature and if you can reduce writing to the database on button clicks and reserve that to a much shorter workflow on one button click on your page, then that is the best way to build your application.